I'd really love to create a two-in-one citrus fruit, but I'll be happy to just grow fruit that's not sour, so I've decided to transform my lemon tree by grafting. But if my new fruit turns out terrible, this will be a big waste of time. Wouldn't it be great to combine a lemon and an orange into one new citrus fruit that's sour like this lemon, but big, juicy, and seedless like this orange? Did you know that it is possible to create a two-in-one citrus fruit like this by grafting? When a scion of this grapefruit-like fruit was grafted to a branch of this Satsuma mandarin, a new branch grew bearing a new citrus fruit that's a combination of the two fruits. How did that happen? The growing tip of a citrus shoot is made up of three layers of cells. These cells have genes that guide the formation of the fruit. For many citrus varieties, the cells in these three layers all have the same genes. But that's not true for all citrus varieties. By grafting, it's possible to get a new variety called a graft chimera that combines the cell layers of two different citrus varieties. I'd love for this to happen in my garden. In this case, the new fruit gets its flesh from the Satsuma mandarin's first cell layer, but it gets its rind, seeds, shape, and size from the other cell layers of the grapefruit-like fruit. So you can see how exciting it would be to get a new graft chimera fruit by grafting oranges to my lemon tree. I hadn't planned to graft my lemon tree at all, but the winter was very cold, so I strung incandescent Christmas lights on all of my newly planted citrus trees. They give off enough heat to protect the trees from mild freezes. But one night a severe freeze was forecast and I worried that the Christmas lights wouldn't be enough to save my trees. So I upgraded to some more powerful lights and I also covered my trees. But lemon trees are much more vulnerable to a freeze than other types of citrus trees. So that night, to add even more heat, I filled up a five gallon bucket with hot water and placed it next to my lemon tree. And I even set up hot water to drip under the tree all night. But the lemon tree didn't survive the cold like I hoped it would. Despite my efforts, the tree lost all of its leaves and the top of the tree is dead. But the bottom of the tree survived just fine and it's in good shape. So now that it's springtime, I've decided to cut off the dead parts and replace the lemon branches by grafting new varieties mostly mandarin oranges. I didn't start grafting until the temperatures were in the ideal range, but the temperatures are still low enough that I'm not too worried about the grafts drying out and dying from the heat. So to prevent the loss of moisture, the only precaution I've taken is to wrap the grafts with parafilm. So far, I've grafted 14 new branches to this tree. But before I started, the tree had already been grafted here. Normally, citrus trees start out with a special variety called a rootstock. A bud from a tree of the desired fruit variety is cut and then bud grafted to the rootstock. The rootstock gives the tree its roots and is responsible for many traits such as resistance to disease. For example, this Australian native lime tree died of root rot because it was propagated by rooting a cutting rather than by grafting to a rootstock. But this tree of the same variety can overcome root rot because it's grafted to a rootstock that's resistant to the disease. This lemon tree was already here when we bought the house, so I don't know what this rootstock is. But as we'll see later in the video, this rootstock also has an impact upon the fruit of the grafted varieties. Now it's three months later and the lemon tree is trying to grow back. But I'd rather grow the fruits of the varieties that I've grafted, so I prune off the lemon sprouts so that they won't overtake the grafted varieties. Several of my springtime grafts are growing well, but a few of them are growing very slowly and a couple of them are still alive, but not growing at all. And these two grafts are dead, so before I do anything else, I'll cut them off. 
I'm not sure why these graphs are doing so poorly, but graph compatibility may be an issue. So I'm going to graph some other varieties to the remaining lemon branches. But we'll take another look at these two graphs later in the video. There's a new problem with growing citrus trees in California that I now have to take into account when grafting. Unfortunately, California now has the same citrus disease that destroyed the citrus trees in Florida. This disease is spread easily by grafting, so I have to be very careful to avoid infecting my tree. Fortunately, California has a program that helps me to avoid disease when grafting. This program is called the Citrus Clonal Protection Program, or CCPP. They have special techniques to remove all graft transmissible diseases from a citrus variety. After removing the diseases, they make certified disease-free budwood available for citrus grafters to order. Similar programs exist in every continent where citrus is grown, and you can learn more about them at fruitmentor.com slash citrusbudwood. Because I've ordered all of my citrus budwood from the CCPP, I can graft these varieties to my tree without infecting it with a disease. In total, I grafted five more branches, but the summer weather is much hotter, putting the grafts at risk of drying out and dying. So I wrap the grafts with aluminum foil to reflect the sunlight and keep them cooler. But a couple of viewers have expressed doubts about my use of aluminum foil and have suggested that paper bags might work better. So I'm gonna do a little experiment to compare them. Aluminum foil is used for cooking and it does conduct heat, so it may seem a little counterintuitive that it would make the graft cooler. So I'm hoping that this test will give a clear result that will help citrus grafters succeed with their summer grafting. I have four test plants and four temperature sensors here. So I also thought a foil line bubble mailer might make a nice choice to protect the graft. I've set up a couple of time-lapse cameras so we can leave this running a while, come back later and see if any of the plants have wilted and died. A year later, my grafts are growing well, but I'm having some doubt as to whether it was a good idea to graft the mandarin oranges. That's because I launched this YouTube channel since I grafted the tree and I've learned so much more about citrus. It turns out that the predominant effect on the quality of these fruits that I've grafted doesn't come from the lemon interstock to which I've grafted, but from the rootstock of the tree. But the grafted branches haven't yet bloomed, so it may be quite a while before I see what the fruit is like. I was surprised to learn that citrus farmers sometimes intentionally grow poorer quality oranges than they could by planting orange trees grafted to lemon type rootstocks like this one, even though they could easily grow more delicious fruit by planting orange trees grafted to trifoliate hybrid rootstocks like this one. These two are both the same mandarin variety grafted at the same time this one to a lemon rootstock, and this one to a trifoliate rootstock. Not only is an orange tree grafted to a lemon type rootstock more vigorous, but it also produces larger fruit with a higher crop yield. So this can help a citrus farmer to make more money even though the fruit doesn't taste as good. I've even seen cases where a fruit variety grafted to a trifoliate rootstock produces delicious fruit but the same variety grafted to a lemon type rootstock produces fruit that's not edible. These two Persian lime trees were grafted to two different lemon type rootstocks at the same time, so you can see that the variety of lemon type rootstock also makes a difference. So I'm a bit worried that the fruits that I've grafted may not be good because my lemon tree is probably grafted to a lemon type rootstock. 
The weather's been cold and rainy, so I did the experiment in my garage with heat lamps, but the afternoon turned out nice, so I moved the experiment outside. The winter weather isn't ideal, but this will be a good sanity check on my indoor results. For my indoor experiment, I did see a big temperature difference between the paper bag and the aluminum foil. The aluminum foil kept the plant much cooler than the paper bag, but the foil line pouch also did a good job and might be useful in rainy climates to keep a graft dry. The outdoor experiment gave consistent results. In both tests, the temperatures inside the paper bag were higher, so it looks like it would actually be harmful to use paper bags in hot weather. But if the weather is too cold for graft healing, they may actually be useful to increase the temperatures of grafts. If you appreciate grafting tips like this, be sure to download my free ebook, Tips for Successful Citrus Grafting, at fruitmentor.com slash grafting tips. I have some promising mandarin oranges of several varieties ripening two and a half years after grafting, but there's no sign of any graft chimera branches. But I will show you what one looks like later in the video. You might think otherwise based on what I'm about to show you, but I want you to know that I really do love my dog Bingo. When the fruit was first ripe, it was very disappointing, but not quite this bad. It was dry and granulated, more like this, but I didn't think to document it at first. But now it's late in the year and I've realized that I ought to make this video for you, so I'm going to use one of the last remaining fruits for a demonstration. This fruit's not even fit for a dog. I don't think she'll eat it. Surely she'll reject it. Based on the poor quality of the fruit, I suspect that my tree had been grafted to one of the most vigorous lemon-type rootstocks. But if it had been grafted to a less vigorous lemon-type rootstock, the fruit might have been edible, but it would still be inferior to fruit grafted to a more appropriate rootstock. Bingo. I'm sorry I fed that to you. She'll eat anything. In rare cases, graft chimeras naturally originate at graft unions, but I've read that it's also possible to induce a graft chimera by breaking off a graft. I understand that they originate from callus tissue that grows at the graft union. These two grafts were not doing well, and then they were shaded by other grafts. Two months after cutting off the top of the tree, one of them had started growing again. But there's no callus tissue remaining on the grafts that grew well, so there's not even a chance of a graft chimera. And now I've learned that it's actually very, very difficult to artificially create a graft chimera, so it was a complete waste of time to graft oranges to my lemon tree. But I promised to show you a branch of a graft chimera, so here's an example. If you're wondering what happened to the tree, I made another video where I attempted a new grafting technique in an attempt to salvage the tree. You can click here to watch it and I look forward to seeing you in that video. And if you happen to know an easy way to induce a graft chimera, please let me know. Here you go, have a treat.